Praise God. You can be seated. Thank you, Liberty Worship Team. Get them a hand clap, please, as they come down off the platform. Praise God. Um, I have something in my heart that I've had in my spirit for quite some time now. I'm going to be preaching it this morning for the very first time. Uh, it's entitled, The Gift of Righteousness. Say, The Gift of Righteousness. The Gift of Righteousness versus the Path of Righteousness. There's a difference, a distinct difference, between the Gift of Righteousness, amen, and the Path of Righteousness. Now, how many of you know that the devil is, is a deceiver? He's a deceiver, and having said that, he will hide the path of righteousness from you. Why? Because the path of righteousness is the blessed life. Say the blessed life. He don't want you to be blessed. Amen. Um, now, I have a prayer request here before we get into our message. Understand that... Uh, Randy Pierce woke up this morning uh, with a headache and high blood pressure. Is that right, uh, Sandy? Okay. Let's, let's stand back up and let's get in agreement here. And uh, let's, let's pray for our brother. And uh, amen. Praise God. This ministry is a miracle ministry. Miracles happen. I fully expect something to happen supernaturally in our brother as we pray and believe God for him this morning. Amen? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray and believe for a healing, the healing power of God to flow into Randy Pierce's body this morning as we're gathered together here this morning. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the curse in Jesus' name. I break every generational curse in his life and ministry, and I command his blood pressure to return to normal in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I command his headache to dissipate in the name of Jesus. And for Randy Pierce to be healed from the top of his head to the tips of his toes in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that our brother is healed. Praise God. You can be seated. Um, last night, <laughs> you know, I sometimes have dreams. And uh, last night I had a dream about our brother sitting back there. Um, I won't tell you his name, but his, but his initials are Tim Walk. I had a dream about our brother, Tim. And I had to do a double take when I saw him in my dream. Because he was walking normal. See, his, his name is Tim Walk. If your last name is Walk, you ought to be walking normal. Huh? Now, he wasn't running. He was walking. But he was walking without any assistance. He was not using a walker. He was not sitting in a wheelchair. He was not using a cane. He was completely healed. And we had great fellowship together. So, brother, you just take that. I said, you take that in the name of Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. I know Lisa yesterday, maybe I shouldn't share this, but I had the microphone turned on, so, and I'm the pastor, so I can share if I want to. So... <laughs> Somebody say, bless him, Lord. I came down for a little, I was down here praying most of the day yesterday, preparing for this morning's uh, message. Got down here about 11 o'clock, 
left, a little after six, something like that. So I was down there for several hours. And uh, Lisa goes, Pastor, he said, I had a dream. Was it, was it, was it the night before? A couple nights ago. And she said, you were driving a brand new vehicle. She said it was a, a blackish, grayish vehicle. And she said, had something to do with Teresa. I thought, that couldn't be God. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. Had something to do with Teresa. Something about she did something for somebody. And so it was kind of a token of their appreciation. I'm thinking, like, that'd be a nice gift. <laughs> and most time it's a, you know, a, gift, a gift card or something, you know, when somebody appreciates you. You know, you know what I'm saying? But a, a new vehicle? She said, it's brand new. And so, but I guess it's Teresa's. I don't know. But she loves her husband, so she'll let me drive it, too. You know, I figured out a long time ago, you know, if you, how, many of you, how, many, how many of you men are married? Now, you men that are not married, you don't understand this. You men that are married, your wife says, hey, what's yours is mine, and what's mine is mine. That's, that's how it works. It's, it's, it, it, I mean, have you men figured that out yet? Huh? Have you men figured that out yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so I hope she'll let me drive it, when it once it arrives. Huh? That'd be all right? Huh? That'd be all right? Praise God. Would you bring your Bibles this morning? Huh? Hold it up real high. And let's make our confession. Say this. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. This morning... I'll be taught the Word of God. I'll never be the same. My ears are open. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the never-changing, the ever-living, the indestructible, the incorruptible seed of the Word of the living God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody shout amen. Amen. Let me be very careful. The word works. When you make that confession, believe it in your heart. If you believe in your heart, that means something supernatural happens in you every time you say it. I said every time you say it. Amen. Now let's pray. Father, we come before your word this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we're asking you this morning, to give each one of us a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the Word of God. May the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. We may know the hope of His calling and enter into our glorious inheritance, which belongs to all the saints in Christ, and receive everything you have for us in the service this morning. And I want to thank you in advance for thinking through my mind for speaking through my lips, to disclose, to unveil, to reveal the mystery of the gospel into our spirits. Thank you, Father. Hearts will be touched. Lives will be changed. And the captives will be set free through your word as it goes forth under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody that agree with that said, amen, amen. amen, amen. Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Ephesians, chapter 2. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2. And we're discussing the gift of righteousness. Say the gift of righteousness. The gift of righteousness versus the path. The path. Say the path. The path of righteousness. Ephesians, chapter 2. Verse 8 says... For by grace are you saved. You see that in your Bible? By grace are you saved. What does the word grace mean? Grace means favor you do not deserve. Nobody deserves salvation. But Jesus did it for us anyway. Huh? You can be the ugliest rascal living on the face of the earth and guess what? 
salvation is for you too. He died for you too. For by grace are you saved through faith. Say through faith. So grace provides it. Faith possesses it. In other words, grace provides it. Faith receives it. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Now, a gift is something that's free. You don't got to pay for it. You don't got to earn it. You don't got to work for it. You don't got to work towards it. You don't have to attain it or achieve it. It's free. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, if you could work for it, well, then you could brag about something you did. You can't brag about it. I mean, you might have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And finally, the breakthrough came. You better brag on God, not brag on your prayer. Huh? It's still by grace. Even though you prayed. Hello? <laughs> Amen. It's still by grace, isn't it? Praise God. Now, by grace are you saved through faith. What is faith? Hmm? What is faith? Faith is simply accepting what God said about you. That's all faith is. Accepting what the Word of God says. Salvation has been provided, but you, got, you have to accept it. Amen? Now let's go to uh, the book of Romans, the 12th chapter. Romans, the 12th chapter, and uh, verse 3 says, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that's among you, not to think of himself more highly than not to think. Let's stop right there. It's not wrong to think highly of yourself. You should think highly of yourself. Jesus paid an awesome price to save you. You better think highly of yourself. It's wrong to think more, more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Amen. But to think soberly. Say to think soberly. According as God had dealt to every man. Say every man. God dealt to every man the measure of faith. So, every born again child of God, man, woman, and child, has been given already the measure of faith. You have it right now. Somebody said, I need... I need some faith, Pastor. Well, well, get born again. You'll get it. No, you already got faith. See, get in line with the Word of God. Say this. Say, God has given unto me the measure of faith. Say, I have it now. Amen. Now, of course, you can increase it. How, how do you increase it? Well, faith cometh, how? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you can increase it, but you have received the measure of faith. Now, I've got a question for you. Why has God given us faith? I'm going to give you four reasons why God has given us faith. Number one, you can't get saved without faith. We just read it. By grace are you saved through faith. You can't get saved without faith. Huh? Number two, According to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, you can't live an overcoming life without faith. How many of you are, over, are overcomers? You live the overcoming life by faith. Amen. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. You can't live an overcoming life without faith. Amen. Number three, talking about why God's given us faith. According to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and 9, you can't resist the devil without faith. It takes faith to resist the devil. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist. How? Steadfast in the faith. See? You can't resist the devil without faith. And then number four, why is God giving us faith? Number four, 
because all of God's gifts and blessings are received by faith. Grace gave them, faith accepts them. Faith receives them. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Salvation is received by faith. Healing is received by faith. The blessing is received by faith. The gift of righteousness is received, how? By faith. You have to accept it. Go to Romans chapter 5 now. We're in Romans chapter 12, now go to 5th chapter of Romans. Okay. Let's start reading verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For, unto the law, for until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. Verse 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Say the free gift. Now circle that in your Bible. Circle the words free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. Say the gift. Circle the words the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift, say the free gift. But the free gift, see, see a gift is free, isn't it? But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Verse 17. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace. Say abundance of grace. And uh, the gift of righteousness. Say the gift of righteousness. And the gift of Righteousness shall what? Shall reign. When we get to heaven, right? What did I say? Shall reign in life. This life. By one, Jesus Christ. Now, the word reign there speaks of operating in your authority. Did you know that? Amen. Now, when you got born again, when you made Jesus your Lord, God applied his righteousness to your spirit man. It's a free gift. You just have to accept it. You didn't earn it. Didn't work for it. Didn't work towards it. You didn't attain it. Didn't achieve it. No, it was given to you. Well, now... You got to do something with it. Huh? How many know when you, when you get born again, you don't automatically reign in life? It's not, huh? Come on now. We have an enemy out there that's going to try to stop you and block your faith. Therefore, you have to do something. <laughs> What's that? So, Reigning in life is in response, say in response, is in response to the gift of righteousness. Can you say amen to that? So, <laughs> in order to reign in life, I have to respond to the gift of righteousness and walk the path of righteousness. Anybody here this morning? See, this is not automatic. Amen. Now, <laughs> the enemy, when you got born again, has set traps for you, to trip you up in your 
spiritual journey. He set traps for you. Okay? So the path of righteousness will lead you around those traps the enemy has set. Amen? The path of righteousness is a protection mechanism. It will protect your faith. It will protect your spiritual life. It will protect your health. It will protect your family. The path of righteousness okay, is not designed to put you in bondage. See, the enemy, he's a deceiver. He'll hide the path of righteousness from you to keep you off that path. Why? So he can defeat you. No, the path of righteousness is designed by the Lord Jesus Christ to set you free. The path of righteousness is not a religion, nor is it a restriction. It's a revelation. The path of righteousness will guard your heart and protect your faith. When you get off the path of righteousness, your faith is left unprotected. But the devil will hide the path of Righteousness from you. Get you doing dumb things and stupid things. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't want you to walk the path of righteousness. But it's for your benefit. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Go to uh, Psalm 23. Go to Psalm 23. And uh, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That means because he's your shepherd, you shall not lack. Amen. That scripture can fill up your gas tank. Verse 2, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by the, beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. Listen to this. He leadeth me in the what? The paths. The paths. Not the gift. The paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Do you see that? See, when you're walking close to the Lord, He'll lead you down the path of righteousness. He'll lead you around traps that the enemy has set for you, for your family. He'll lead you around those traps. If you're you're walking with him, listening to him, um, adhering to him, obeying him, amen, it's to protect your heart. See, what are you doing? You're responding to the gift of righteousness now. You're reigning in life. Go to uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Now look at verse 23. It says, keep thy heart. That means guard your heart. With all what? With all diligence. Say diligence. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Now the word issues there in the Hebrew means forces. When you got born again, there were spiritual forces that were imparted to your spirit man. The force of faith. Faith is a force. It's it's in here. Love is a force. It's, It's right down in here. Righteousness is a force, and it's right down here. Well, you're to guard your heart with all diligence. Why? So that these forces that are in you are free to flow out of you and affect your life, affect your circumstances, affect those around you in a positive way. Amen? But 
when you aren't diligent to watch what you say, to watch places that you go, to watch your, your conduct, your behavior, when you aren't diligent to, to do that, then you aren't guarding your heart. And his forces will be stifled in you. Amen? See, when you get off, when you get off the path of righteousness, your heart is wide open to the enemy. Your faith is being left unprotected. Like we learned last Sunday. If you left the path of righteousness, just simply repent. It takes 10 seconds. And then get back on it. And then get back on it. Guess what? You're right back where you need to be then. You don't, you don't got to labor under guilt for the next six months. No, you receive it. You accept God's forgiveness. You accept it. That's called faith. Amen? Amen. So, what is, what is the Spirit of God saying to us this, this morning? He's saying this to us. We need to not only accept the free gift of righteousness, but also follow after righteousness. Can you say amen to that? Now, go, go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 51, and it's, uh, it's really clear here. Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 1. It says, Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, the path of righteousness, not the gift. Do you see that in your Bible? Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord. You got to spend time seeking the Lord to follow God. You got to spend time with God. You got to spend time in the Word, spend time in prayer. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock when ye are hewn, hewn, and to the hole of the pit when ye are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and, and to Sarah that bare you. For I called him alone, and what? Blessed him. And what? Increased him. Do you see that? When you're on the path of righteousness, things work better for you. The blessing will work for you now. You follow? Do you see that? Why? Because bless, the blessing is activated by your faith. Well, there's nothing now blocking your faith. Why? You're on the path of righteousness now. You're ruling and reigning in life. You're keeping the devil under your feet where he belongs. Amen? You're watching what comes out of your mouth. Amen? You're being diligent to make sure that your conduct and behavior lines up with his righteousness. You're being diligent to make sure that your lifestyle lines up with his righteousness. Amen? What did James say? He said, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. See, if I'm following God, if my life is holy, submitted to the Lord, the devil ain't got a chance. It's when I get off that path of righteousness, start doing my own thing, living my own life the way I want to live it, no, I shouldn't be doing that. I said, I shouldn't be doing that. Amen. I need to be keeping my eyes on this and keeping this here going to my ears, keep it in my heart and coming out of my mouth. Do you see that uh, in your Bible? Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bare him. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places. And he will make her wilderness like Eden, like Eden, and her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. So in other words, when you're on the path of righteousness, your life will be like the garden of Eden. Things will flow better. Things will work better. Amen? Healing flows. Blessings flow. Everything starts flowing better in your life. Can you say amen to that? Praise God. So, what's the Spirit of God saying to us this morning? Walking the path of righteousness is the blessed life. Can you say amen to that? I said walking the path of righteousness is the blessed life. It's the good life. It's the God kind of life. It's the abundant life that Jesus came to give. Amen? amen. We, talk a lot, we talk a lot around here about the blessing. 
I'm teaching you how to operate in it, how to live in it. Amen? Praise God. Now, last scripture. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 6. This is our offering scripture. Get ready to receive the offering. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31 says, Take no thought saying. You know, Brother Hagin always said that any thought that's not acted on would die unborn. A thought may come to your mind, but you don't take it unless you say it. Now, once you say it, that means you took it. I mean, there are all kinds of thoughts coming to my mind. I'll say, I- I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Amen? Because once I say it, that means I took it. Unless it lines up with this here, be careful what you say. Amen? Take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Or how am I going to be able to put gas in my car this week? Or how am I going to be able to buy groceries this week? Or how can I pay my credit card bill or whatever? For after all these things, do the Gentiles seek? For your Heavenly Father, know that you have need of all these things. But, verse 33, but seek ye first. Say first. Not second. <laughs> Hello. Not third. Not fourth. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness you see that in your bible then what's hap- then what will happen and all these things that you have need of and that you desire even that are consistent with a godly life shall be added shall be added unto you you see that in your bible Praise God. so what are you saying this morning we're saying this that when god is in when god is first place in our lives and we're seeking his kingdom not just trying to squeeze the Word of God into our busy schedule, but planning our busy schedule around this right here, then everything's going to work out for me. Amen. That means I bring my words. Hello. Hello. My words, my actions, my priorities, my purposes in line with this right here. What's going to happen then? My faith's going to work better. The blessing's going to flow. People around me are going to be blessed too. And what comes out of me is going to affect those around me. Parents, what comes out of you is going to affect your household. Don't curse your children. Don't curse your home. Amen. Don't say something ugly about yourself or about your children. Always speak words of life. So that the blessing can be activated. And peace can flow in your home. Peace can flow in your life. You can change the atmosphere at your workplace. By doing this stuff. Amen. People will want to be around you. I said people will, will want to be around you. Amen. Notice again. But seek ye first. The kingdom of God. And his righteousness. And all these things. Shall be added unto you. That right there is the blessing. Now I've got to put God first. Even in my finances. I don't pay my bills. And then what's left over, I give a little bit to God. No, I give what belongs to God first. Then I pay my bills. Now, I couldn't preach this stuff if I didn't do it. We do it in this church. Rosha, who pays her bills here, knows that we pay the tithe before we pay the pastor. She knows that. If there's a choice between paying the pastor or paying our tithe, we're going to pay the tithe. That's why. Putting God first. Putting him first in my finances and every area of my life. As you spend time seeking God, he'll show you and lead you down the path of righteousness. We just read that in Psalm chapter 23. Amen. He leads you around traps the enemy has set. Amen. And there are times where you don't really understand some things, but you know you're to... I know the other day... Um, I don't answer my phone if I don't see a name come up or if I don't recognize that number. I, I never do. But the other day the phone rang and uh, said, I know a number. I knew I was to answer it. 
I knew down here I was to answer the phone. It was a Mattoon Police Department. I thought, what did I do? What did I do? Well, I was thinking something bad, you know, that happened. He said, uh, or she, the lady on the other, other end of the phone, said that there, there are two police officers down, down at your church. She said, a, a door is open on the south, a window is open on the south, um, southeast end of the building there. And so I came down here, and sure enough, it was open. And, and then we took, we took care of it, closed it. And later, Pat realized that when he and Jerry fixed the siding on the side of our building over there, that they didn't secure the, the lock on that door, on that window. And that's, why, that's, why, that's why the wind blew it open. Anyhow, we, we, we fixed it. And uh, see, I knew I was to answer the phone. See, I was being led by the Spirit. just didn't know it. There'll be times where you'll do things, you, you don't really have... You don't really hear a voice. You don't really feel something spiritual happening, but you just know you're to do something or to say something. That's the Lord leading you. Follow that leading. Follow, follow that direction. Amen? Amen? Praise God. I mean, you have avoided more accidents than what you know about when you're, when you're following God. Amen? We're here today because of the grace of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So thank God for that gift of righteousness and thank God for his leadings, for his promptings. That we can walk the path of righteousness and avoid traps that the enemy has set for us. Amen. And protect our faith so that the enemy cannot block our faith or stop the blessing from working in our lives. Amen. Now let's stand up. Praise God. And I'm going to speak the blessing over you. Amen. And so um, then you make sure that you watch your words now this, this next week and, and watch... Watch to see what happens over the, over the next 90 days in your finances now. If you'll if you're, if you're watch what you say and um, bring your conduct and behavior in line with the Word of God, just watch to see what happens in your finances over the next 90 days. Amen. Praise God. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for the free gift of righteousness. Hallelujah. And for the leadings of the Holy Spirit to put us on the path of righteousness. To lead us around traps the enemy has set. And to guard our hearts and protect our faith so that the blessing can work in our lives. And so in the name of Jesus, I declare and I decree every family represented here this morning, blessed of the Lord. Blessed in the name of Jesus. I say to them, in Jesus' name, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.